हेलो 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 कैन यू हियर मी हेलो या कैन यू हियर यस या या All participants to be in mute. They won't be disturbed. A hearty welcome to all the participants. On the, uh, of this webinar on new trends in tinnitus evaluation and latest management. Our speakers are Dr. Rajendra Kumar, Dr. Kumaran, and Dr. Mahbub Shahnaz. And the organizers are uh, like myself, Lakshmi Prasanna, associate professor and HOD of uh, speech and hearing, Swikar Rehabilitation uh, Institute, and uh, Dr. Nagendra Kanthapati, president of Prasalpa, and Dr. Imad Khan Ruman, general secretary of Prasalpa and Yuka. Okay. So, before moving on to this fascinating webinar, I would like to thank the Chairman Sir, Dr. Hanuman Rao, founder of Sikar Institute of Rehabilitation Science. He is known for his contributions to developmental pediatrics, pediatrics, rehabilitation medicine, and psychology. So he's based in Hyderabad and has been practicing medicine for the last 46 years. In 2023, he was considered the Padma Shri, India's fourth highest civilian award in Delhi for his contribution in medicine. And also received about 37 awards by state and central government and various international organizations. This is in collaboration with TASALPA and Yuka associations. for this fascinating webinar during which you will gain extensive information about tinnitus and the most oh, I'm giving over to Dr. Uh, Rajendra Kumar Korika. So since 2008, he's working as an audiologist and speech pathologist and then all his professional educations. He's advisor and founder member of Telangana as uh, as ASLP Association and UCA. Chairman and Chief Editor for Tasalpa Newsletter and Editor for ISAM, Indian Journal of Audiology. Key person to AYJ NISHD as University awarded uh, PhD and also Fellowship in Cochlear Implantation and he is in various journals. I would like to request Dr. Rajendra Kumar, sir, to kindly give his speech on introduction and subject to evaluation of tinnitus. Yeah, are you able to hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. You are the host. I'm audible? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. I'm sharing my, my screen. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Lakshmi Prasanna, for the introduction. So, today, part of attendance week. Awareness week, we are uh, obliged to conduct in association with Tasalpa and you, the Vika Academy of Education Sciences. 
We extend thanks to all the participants and the lecturers and the professors who have placed uh, the students to participate in this. As an audience, it's right. We have to do this is a completely third time uh, in this week. We have done uh, our from our side awareness. So similarly, in the future also we need to do. Uh, and uh, coming to the today's topic, are you able to see my screen? Are you able to see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. So. So today's topic, uh, as we know, that uh, I'm going to take on introduction and subjective evaluation of uh, tinnitus. So a famous quotation by a great uh, physician that only my ears whistle and buzz continuously day and night. I can say I'm living a worst life, said by Lud Ludwig von Beethoven in the year 1801. He's also a tinnitus sufferer. So he knows the value and of uh, being a normal hearing and also being suffering with the tinnitus, how bothersome it is. So coming to today's topic, so myself, I am Dr. Rajendra Kumar. So uh, this is about me. You can take screenshot. I also have YouTube channel where I also do voice therapy uh, demos and, and also uh, uh, little interested in hearing aids and cochlear implants see coming to this topic today we have got this uh, content where introduction to tinnitus tinnitus uh, as you know we generally see that it is a sound which is perceived in the ear but in the absence of external stimuli there is no stimulus no sound source from uh, outside but it is uh, heard by the patient the sufferer and even by the normals, uh, once in three months or two months, we can hear this wee or whoo kind of tone, pure tone kind of sound in our ear. So this sound uh, uh, that is known as tinnitus, which is derived from China, which means ringing in the Latin language. So according to the International Con Classification of Functioning, Disability and Health, ICF, it states that tinnitus is a dis described as a separate condition with sensation of low pitch, rushing, hissing, or ringing in the ears. We know that there are, there are se several types of uh, tinnitus um, that, is, that even uh, ocean roaring and bell ringing kind of thing and cricketing sound in the ear, cricket-like sound, and so on. So tinnitus arises so many problems. As we know, it arises irritation, poor concentration, attention, work, work disturbances from uh, internally from his side, a patient's side and uh, anxiety. There is a poor work performance by that and disturbances even in the sleep. So, but when it comes to tinnitus, it is broadly classified into two. That is one is subjective, uh, that is, uh, which is common uh, type of tinnitus. And the second one is objective, that is a rare condition, which uh, is heard by the uh, by the uh, tester that is evaluate um, those who evaluate means the audiologist can also hear with the help of uh, stethoscope and other things where he can uh, perceive the sound. So these types are like subjective type is generally caused by abnormal nerve activity in auditory cortex. So the patient perceives sounds that are not there actually. When it comes to objective tinnitus. It is caused by physiological process near middle ear, like uh, muscle spasm, and uh, the sound being made, and it can be also heard by the listener, means the evaluator. See, coming to the incidence and prevalence of tinnitus, the various studies states that from it is approximately from 15 to 20 percent of the population in the world is suffering with tinnitus, and among that, 20 percent of the cases show a very terrible uh, means they say that it is uh, severely uh, affecting them and it is severe problem and in india according to the extrapolated data it shows that around 4 people 
four crore people are suffering with tinnitus then tinnitus uh, though uh, we have very less uh, studies in surveys very few studies in institutional based studies are there large scale studies and long longitudinal studies are not, uh, rare in india till yet to come and coming to tinnitus it has been found to affect more in men than women approximately 12% of the men are affected and women are affected around 7% which is less comparing to men and the prevalence of tinnitus increases with age and it is most common between 40 to 70 years and coming to the prevalence and causes about 300 diseases may have tinnitus as one of its manifestations so uh, we can say a human who is suffering from 300 kinds of diseases they are prone to get this tinnitus and it may be classified according to the affected region such as peripheral central tinnitus extraordinary or of unknown origin also so there is you no know, some cases the etiology is unknown then uh, coming to tinnitus is, is usually accompanied by sensory neural hearing loss and which is generally caused by aging that is geriatric and uh, noise exposure and autotoxic medications and uh, significantly it is around 90% with sensory neural hearing loss and around 5% in conductive hearing loss cases tinnitus is significantly accompanied with hearing difficulties around 70% of the uh, hearing um, problem means those who have hearing problem they are they may get the tinnitus so coming to the causes uh, by the means uh, seeing the pathway of the ear and hearing we can see the outer ear causes leads to um, this tinnitus even the wax build up our foreign objects uh, insertion may also uh, get the tinnitus and middle ear causes such as fluid infection diseases and uh, ear drum diseases etc may also cause tinnitus even the ascular and discontinuity many causes then coming to the in uh, middle inner ear that is cochlear uh, level causes such as noise exposure minious disease and uh, many other uh, diseases may also cause tinnitus and uh, whereas retrocochlear like tumors and um, uh, any other uh, complications at higher level um at uh, brain level mid brain level thalamus level may also cause the tinnitus apart from this even the psychological causes such as depression such as anxiety uh, or uh, the uh, problem which they undergo the trauma psychological trauma may also lead to tinnitus so tinnitus has a very uh, broad uh, what we call causes and uh, here to know that how much how much tinnitus it is there how much it is affecting how um, and what type of tinnitus so we need to know uh, the detailed evaluation we need to do and then we can know about the tinnitus and its problem how it is affecting the individual so starting from case history a detailed case history is important where we find out the uh, exact means the predisposing causes of tinnitus where it affects the uh, leads to tinnitus uh, such as uh, a detailed case history even um their um uh, general health and also other related health also, uh, like um, um autotoxic medication or medications and uh, uh, yeah, related to hearing ear or uh, their uh, locality and uh, their lifestyle this also uh, sometimes means maybe if they are uh, uh, if they are uh, having stress levels more or anxiety levels more it may also cause tinnitus so detailed case history uh, we know it's an half diagnosis so we need to take proper case history so that we will find the causation the causation uh, symptomatic treatment re- uh, really helps in uh, also uh, reducing tinnitus or eliminating tinnitus in some cases so detailed case history is very much important and futon audiometry we know it is very much important and uh, the psychoacoustic tests including pitch loudness matching and uh, Re- uh, residual inhibition and other tests are also very much important and uh, the subjective evaluation like usage of questionnaire is very very much important and uh, you can uh, see this the subjective evaluation according to bagley et al 2013 he said that any attempt to make an evidence based comparison of the efficacy of various regimens treatments or uh, approaches is un- constrained by the 
heterogeneity of patients with tinnitus means there are variety of patients they are not homogeneous means they are not of uh, equal or similar level so to uh, know that we need to have a proper uh, evaluation where the holistic uh, uh, subjective response we get elicit from that from the questionnaire the standardized and universal accepted grading tools are absolutely essential uh, to evaluate questionnaire and the, uh, to evaluate the patient with tinnitus there are number of self assessment tools have been designed by various approach author, uh, authors and authorities uh, a few commonly employed tools are visual analog scale and tinnitus handicap inventory and many other scales like the tinnitus functional index and uh, we have tinnitus questionnaire we have tinnitus um, uh, what we call a uh, hospital anxiety depression scale and many other scales which are developed uh, not only in uh, one country all over the world so when it comes to visual analog scale it tells us how much worry or the problem he is experiencing with the tinnitus so we will give this uh, scale uh, kind of thing and we ask the patient to mark how much level he is been affected with the tinnitus suppose we say that zero as no pain there is no problem and uh, 100 as severe irritable or catastrophic problem so the patient is given and here in pictor uh, pictorially there we can see that how the pain uh, leads and uh, uh, you can see that expression uh, here in this visual analog scale the patient will let us know how much pain he is undergoing because we cannot find we cannot perceive only the patient can judge and tell that and coming to the tinnitus handicap inventory it was developed by newman jacobson and spitzer in the year 1996 and uh, it is very uh, very popular actually this uh, questionnaire which is been uh, spread all over the world and it has been uh, translated and standardized and uh, developed in many other languages so uh, thi is considered as one of the most standard reliable and easy to administer questionnaires in the field of tinnitus the tinnitus questionnaire comprises of 25 questions with self assessment scales on likert's three point rating scale that is yes uh, score uh, is given 4 and sometimes is given 2 score and whereas no response is given 0 score so here the tinnitus severity grading so this grading uh, is done according to the uh, what we call uh, the score obtained by the patient the uh, here 0 to 16 is known as no tinnitus or slight handicap and whereas 18 to 36 is said to be mild handicap tinnitus and uh, uh, 38 to 56 is moderate handicap 58 to 76 is severe handicap and 78 to 100 is catastrophic handicap so this questionnaire uh, if you see in that it is comprised of uh, and it is jumbled in the it actually immersed with a uh, Uh, jumbled questions of the uh, functional aspects emotional aspects and catastrophic aspects these three domains uh, will really evaluate in three domain ways uh, how the patient is re reacting to it so now in functional uh, reactions to uh, tinnitus such as difficulties to concentrate and uh, anti social trends so how is his functional level that we are also going to assess using this are uh, questionnaire in emotional reactions to uh, tinnitus such as anger frustration irritability and depression these uh, things are covered in under emotional uh, domain where in catastrophic domain uh, the reactions to tinnitus such as despair a feeling of hopelessness a fear of severe disease or loss of control and incapacity to cooperate these severe um, uh, problems uh, catastrophic problems are also Uh, uh they are uh, covered in this uh, questionnaire and uh, for example if you see the questions uh, such as functional questions uh, we find out in functional domain the example a uh, f1 question is there where uh, because of tinnitus is it difficult for you to concentrate so this is functional level and whereas uh, whereas emotional does your tinnitus make you angry so the patient is expected to give yes no sometimes responses and uh, one more emotional uh, question do you complain a great deal about your tinnitus so these uh, emotional these kind of emotional aspects are also covered under this questionnaire and uh, 
coming to the catastrophic uh, kind of question such as because of your tinnitus are you desperate are you desperate to get rid of it this kind of questions are also given and um, one more catastrophic example that do you feel as though you cannot escape from your tinnitus so the patient is expected to give yes no or sometimes in response so in this uh, tinnitus handicap inventory this is original version uh, given by newman et al in the year 1996 where you can find 25 number of questions are there 1 to 25 which cover covers functional um, uh, catastrophic and also emotional uh, domains uh, and these are not uh, these are uh, taken care that it is not in a serial way it is jumbled the functional emotional and catastrophic domains are jumbled and immersed in this questionnaire so that the exact and holistic response how much uh, he is affected in three uh, that is uh, functional and emotional level and also catastrophic level we will find out and this same questionnaire we had uh, uh, translated from our srm university uh, under balakrishnan sir in the year 2018 we have uh, taken this uh, original thi question, uh, thi questionnaire and we have with the help of and with the consent of and permission from the newman et al after obtaining uh, permission from them uh, and we have done extensive um, uh, translation and development of this questionnaire so when we translated this question we have translated in uh, all the uh, particular standard format uh, at research level first we have uh, taken the english and we have changed it to telugu and again telugu is translated back into english given back uh, to the uh, what we call uh, bilinguals and also before that we have given it to experts uh, aslps who have minimum 5 to 10 years experience and we have found and formulated the questions which are appropriately and aptly uh, uh, to the original level and it has got very good internal consistency and validity that also measured so overall uh, with this uh, i conclude that tinnitus uh, is a problem where it need to be properly taken care first and uh, we need to find out what kind of uh, uh, means how much problem he is been affected so the subjective evaluation is much more important subjective questionnaire evaluation is much more important where the patient tells us about the about the um type of problem and the severity of problem he has been affected with so thank you and this is rajendra kumar from here and you can now the session is over for the discussion madam any questions you can the hello audible Yeah. Now, this question, many uh, of the participants, you can uh, raise the question. I need to ask. request participants to put any questions lakshmi prasanna madam to take over this session sir i have one question and uh, hand over mic yes, to uh, dr kender 
the honorable president of participants can also text questions or queries if any uh, who is this can uh, hello I request that participants to put in text so that I can convey to the speaker. Sir Rajendra sir. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Sir, one of the participant is asking, what is the abnormal neural? Sir Rajendra, sir. Hello. Please unmute, sir. Unmute, sir. Unmute, please. Okay. Sir, one of the participants is asking what is the abnormal neuronal activity happening in subjective tinnitus? Yeah, yeah. Please, sir. Yes. Sir, can you hear me? Hello, oh, are you able to hear? Yes, sir. Any yes. question? Yes, otherwise, we can end with the... Sir, other. can you hear me? Hello? Abnar yes, I am not here. Pardon. Now I can hear. Hello. What is normal? You can have an interview. Hello. Okay. Hello. Yeah. Ah uh, yes, uh, I have got the question. I have got the question. Any app? Uh, Actually, to and it is the level of beyond Hello? inner ear, beyond inner ear. Your voice is not clear, sir. Your voice is not clear. Okay, okay, okay. You can. Go ahead, uh, I go, go ahead. It's the next day.
हेलो हेलो मैडम देर इज सिग्नल प्रॉब्लम विद राजेंद्र सर मैडम लेट्स गो हेड विद नेक्स्ट पे स्पीकर एंड टेक क्वेश्चंस आफ्टर द सेशन ओके ओके so i would like to yeah, yeah. Uh, i would like to request dr nagendra kanikapati to uh, welcome second speaker of this webinar thank you madam thank you for giving this opportunity i am very happy to welcome second speaker of today's webinar he is none other than dr kumaran sir he is associate professor working in the department of audiology and speech language pathology srm medical college hospital and research center srm institute of science and technology chennai he has 10 years of experience in the field of speech and hearing he successfully accomplished various milestones including the publications of research papers in both national and international journals serving as a reviewer for renowned international journals and he is delivering presentations on research findings at conferences on both at national and global scale we welcome you sir thank you so much for accepting our invitation and uh, making a part of this webinar sir thank you over to you i request rajendra sir to make kumaran sir as host sir so that he can share his ppt okay okay i no prasanna madam you can make him as a host who has got the uh, this one presently you are the host sir okay okay i have, I have came out because signal uh, through mob through desktop it is weak okay okay so again i i am i am making him sir one second ah uh, please make him please make him. okay kumaran sir now you are the host please share your can screen can you hear sir. me yes sir yes sir please welcome sir. Can you see my slides, sir? Yes, sir. Yeah, I can see. Yes. So, okay. Good morning, all. So, thank you for the intro. So, now I'll be discussing about the psychoacoustic measures of tinnitus. So, quickly we recall with the introduction. We all know that tinnitus is the perception of sound in the ear or head without any external stimulus. we can classify this into two types one is objective type another one is a subjective type we all know we all know that objective type we all can hear others also can hear other than the individuals but it's relatively uncommon the main cause for objective type of tinnitus may be the blood flowing through the jugular vein otherwise hypertension will often hear that venous hums other than that uh, middle ear muscle spasms this might be the causes for the tinnitus so because of this uh, middle ear spasms those tensor tympani muscles in the eustachian tube will undergo sudden jerk this might cause that mucous membranes of the eustachian tube to move quickly together this all will be creating the objective type of tinnitus the tinnitus sound will be clicking sound or the person they can hear their own voices unusually loud so other than that eustachian tube that is open abnormally large this also may create a objective type of tinnitus sometimes this objective type of tinnitus will be a roaring sound it corresponds with the breathing then individuals who has a objective type of tinnitus they will not have other symptoms such as hearing loss oral fullness or vertigo so next one is the subjective type this is the most common type we can see in the clinics this type of tinnitus only the sufferer individuals who is here suffering with the tinnitus they can hear the sound this is you know that mechanism of this tinnitus are still not clearly understood you know hypothesis you know this might be the cause and this might be the reason like mild to moderate level tinnitus 
maybe it's hypothesized that generated in the ear severe type of tinnitus it is hypothesized that generated in the central nervous system we can compare the tinnitus with pain generators also minor pain is thought to be generated at the peripheral nerves severe or chronic pain it be generated with the central nerves this nerves you know central nerves generating the tinnitus it's believed that reorganization of nerve pathways it's a result of less or absence of input from the peripheral system to the central system so there is a increased excitability of the neurons which is perceived as a tinnitus causes of tinnitus important causes hearing loss hearing loss is a cause of tinnitus then meniere's disease meniere's disease when it causes tinnitus the tinnitus will be low frequency in nature then dysfunctions of the auditory nerve when the tumor is present in the auditory nerve or vascular compressions in the nerve this all will be pressure alters the temporal pattern of nerve discharges then it become the tinnitus cerumen blockage this is the temporary tinnitus once that cerumen is removed wax is removed the tinnitus will be reduced or eliminated autotoxic drugs cause tinnitus then sometimes the tinnitus is idiopathic so in order to provide that best management optimum management for the tinnitus individuals the patient must undergo complete medical and audiological assessment so evaluations that assessment of tinnitus we can divide into two one is the medical evaluation second one is the audiological evaluation in medical evaluation we should remember that tinnitus is not a disease it is a symptom it may include with any other diseases so the evaluation medical evaluation should include detailed case history complaint of the tinnitus complaint of the hearing loss vertigo hyperacusis then earlier histories previous tinnitus testing illness and medications then cardiovascular disease renal disease endocrine disease metabolic disease patients mental health should be evaluated anxiety or depression should be ruled out any signs of neurological disease like you know seizures dementia ataxia of gait tremor or dysarthria should be noted this all indicate that brain damage it may associate with the tinnitus moving on to the audiological evaluation audiological evaluation will do basic audiological test pure tone audiometry speech audiometry test emittance tympanometry acoustic reflexes along with that we can do ecg abr also this all the test will helps us in identifying causes of the tinnitus then site of lesion move on to the psychoacoustic measurement of tinnitus under the psychoacoustical measurements we can do four things one is pitch matching second one is loudness matching third one is residual inhibition fourth one is minimal masking pitch matching the procedure is tones are presented to the patient we ask the patient to choose which one is most closely match the tinnitus that they hear this is continued this procedure is continued until the match is made so when we do pitch matching there is a chances of octave confusions octave confusions means when you present the stimulus the person will be telling that my tinnitus is close to particularly close to this sound but is exactly not this sound so that time their tinnitus may be one octave above what the sound we are presenting or one octave below what the tone we are presenting so what we can do is we can use a two alternative forced choice procedure we will be presenting two stimulus so two alternative forced choice we will be presenting two stimulus first stimulus is above the octave frequency one octave above the tone second one is one octave below the tone and we can ask the person which one is more close to that so this will overcome the octave confusions important concern in this there are some complications when you do the pitch matching 
So some of them, they'll tell that more than one type of pitch. So when they hear more than one tone, it is difficult to decide which is the predominant one and which sound we have to ignore. Then second complication is like tinnitus changes quite frequently. So the pitch match will be unreliable. Tinnitus will be masked by the tones presented during the tinnitus matching. So what sound we present, there is a chance that sound will be masking the tinnitus. Then we have to be careful that they should not confuse with pitch matching and loudness matching. So to overcome this, what we can do? First, we can do the loudness matching. Then with that same level, we can do the pitch matching. So implications for the treatment. So how the pitch matching is helps to the treatment. So we can give a proper counseling to the subjects. We can validate the presence of tinnitus. Then clients also will understand that, yes, tinnitus is a real one. I'm not imagining that sound. Then selection and fitting of tinnitus maskers device. So next one is loudness matching. In this loudness matching, Usually loudness, what level they are matching their tinnitus, it will be few decibels above a person's threshold. So procedure is, you have to start a level just below the threshold, then increasing the intensity until the patient signals a match. This implication is, loudness matching implication is important for counseling the patient. Then residual inhibition. Residual inhibition is a temporary suppression or disappearance of tinnitus. In this, what we do is tinnitus uh, frequency, 10 dB above the loudness already what we matched, 10 dB above that level will be presenting the, to the subject for one minute. So when we present this for one minute, we can get four types of result. One is tinnitus is completely absent for more than one minute. That is called as a positive complete. Sometimes they tell tinnitus is still present, but it's softer earlier than. So that is called positive partial. So after residual inhibition, sometimes they'll tell there is no change in the tinnitus. That is called as a negative one. Sometimes very rare. What will happen after the residual inhibition, there is a chance the tinnitus is louder. That is called a rebound. So this purpose is mainly will tell that tinnitus masker devices are nowadays available in the market. So the tinnitus mark maskers are useful to the subject or not, it will be your residual inhibition will be helping us. Then minimal masking. In minimal masking, what we do, you will be presenting the sound, you will be increasing the intensity. That intensity just mask the tinnitus, lowest intensity level when that person cannot hear their tinnitus. So this we can do with the noise or tone for one to two seconds at all the frequencies, 250 hertz to 8,000 hertz. So once you traced this minimal masking for all the frequencies, 250 hertz to 8,000 hertz, we can connect that, it becomes a curve. Then this curve, we can classify or compare with the Feldman's system. So there are five types. One is a convergence. Second one is the divergence. So in convergence, the threshold curve, patient's threshold curve and masking curve will slope together from low to high frequencies. So it will indicate that when the convergent type comes, there are good candidacy for acoustic masking. Second one is the divergence. In divergence, that slope from low frequency to high frequency will be opposite to the convergence, it will be far away. So it indicates that poor candidacy, but acoustical masking is possible. Third one is congruence. In this threshold and masking curves almost overlap each other for all the frequencies. So it indicates that good, good candidate for any type of masker. Then type four, distance. The masking curve follows the threshold curve, but at least 20 dB above the threshold. 
So in this, what will happen? The distance between the masking curve and the threshold curve will be so more than 20 dB difference. So what will happen? If suppose they have a cochlear pathology, above their threshold, 20 dB above their threshold, there is a chance that recruitment takes place. So not be able to tolerate the acoustical masking. Then type 4A, this also same like a distance one. But in this, tinnitus can only be masked by pure tones. Type 5, persistence. In this, no sound at any level can mask tinnitus. The patient has a severe to profound hearing loss. We can see that persistent type. Sometimes you can see with the moderate hearing loss also. They are not a candidate for a acoustical masking. So, thank you. So usually what we have to do is like first we have to send the person for a complete a medical evaluation so that medical evaluation will help us okay whether we can what type of you know it's any other medical condition is associated with the tinnitus or not then we can go with the audiological evaluations audiological evaluations so mainly it will tell that is you know, help us like where is the problem site of lesion then what type of problem you know nerve is affected or cochlea is affected so these informations help us for the treatment so that is the reason we are doing a psychoacoustic questioners already sorry explained what is the importance of questioners why we are doing that along with that questioners we have to do the psychoacoustical measurement also psychoacoustical measurement each thing will tell you the person is you know tinnitus masking is better any other treatment is better which is the we can select optimum treatment to the person based on their assessment so that is the reason we are doing a pitch matching loudness matching residual inhibition and a minimal masking so along with this all the evaluations we can select a better treatment to the individuals thank you Very good uh, presentation, Mr. Kumaran. Any queries, uh, you can ask uh, participants. You can put in chat box or you can directly ask, unmute your mic and uh, you can ask. Can I ask a question, uh, Dr. Kumaran? Sir, please. Are you able to hear? Yes, yes. Yeah. This, uh, who are the better candidates? Uh, how to know uh, the hearing aids will facilitate better to them? So that's why not only the hearing aid, there are special devices for uh, tinnitus muscles. Like, yes, it will not only the amplification, it will be only that it is a master for the tinnitus. Yeah. So you know that we cannot tell that, you know, each person that management option yeah. will be wearing the same management technique we cannot uh, take for all the individuals because tinnitus is completely different from other conditions. So what we can do is that is the important thing. We are doing this all the assessment yes. based on this assessment. That's why last slide I said that uh, comparing with the Feldman's curve, and telling that who are the good candidate for the treatment, the tinnitus maskers, we can recommend them tinnitus masking devices, so they will get benefit from that. Yeah, yeah, very nice. Uh, that's good. And uh, there is a phenomena known as the residual inhibition. No? So yes, who inhib inhibits better may uh, are the good candidates for maskers and uh, mask, uh, master inbuilt hearing aids and. Uh, Yes, as a residual inhibition, if it comes uh, positive, complete, they are a good candidate for uh, masking devices. Sir. They'll get benefit from the tinnitus maskers. Yeah, yeah. Very nice uh, presentation. I think in future we need to 
elaborate extend this presentation for longer time so that a detailed understanding will be done for the participants and our aslps who are working on so the briefly prepared a slide diagnostically those who are interested in audiology yeah yes yes it is very good in half an hour you have given uh, lots of information about convergent divergent and uh, congruent uh, kind of types of patients thank you yes thank you. Oh, I, and moreover we i could as a participant i understood one thing previously i used to think uh, tinnitus as a disease now i am thinking tinnitus is a symptom not a disease today i could understand these things thank you so much for enlightening us sir thanks sir thank you sir. Thank you so much, sir. I request Dr. Imad Khan to uh, uh, welcome our third speaker of this webinar. Thank you, thank you, madam. I will thank. I would like to thank all the committee members and uh, Lakshmi, madam, and uh, Rajendra Kumar, sir. Thank you all. Hello, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Dr. Imad Khan. So I would like to introduce uh, Dr. Thank you, Mahbub Shanawas, sir, who is a very known name since the uh, 50 years of experience in the field of speech and hearing. He is also director of Dharna Medical Technologies. He is a panel board member of licensing audiologists and technicians in Dubai and also for the special education. So he is also a committee member and also universal newborn screening program uh, coordinator of the Emirates system. And also is a panel board member and uh, selection of audiologists for the Dubai and uh, he is holding a DHA license. And also is the world's first tinnitus assessment product. He is a developer of tinnitus station and high frequency audiometer software, which works for the normal PC. And he is also holding world's first tinnitus treatment product and also protocols of a normal Android platform for the normal mobile phone. He is also having world's first virtual audiometry, a verbal therapy program with a virtual cochlea model and also statistical correlations. He is also having speech and voice language therapy modules for all speech and language communication disorders. He is holding the vast experience in the field of tinnitus as well and also in the speech and hearing. So it is a great pleasure to welcome the legendary uh, Dr. Mahbub Shanawa sir to present and also enlighten us with the uh, knowledge and expertise in the care of tinnitus and management. Thank Over you, to Ibrahim. you sir. Uh, thank you, Imad. I hope uh, I'm heard there. My voice is there. Y yes, sir. Absolutely. We are okay. here. Uh, thank you, Imad. Thank you, Nagendra, uh, for uh, making me a member of the UACA. Uh, uh, I'm uh, very grateful because you people are doing a lot of activities in this region and uh, conducting uh, regular seminars and uh, camps and other things is a very uh, uh, big one. And thank I you, sir. Thank you, sir. Really, uh, congratulate you and jubilate you on this uh, prestigious uh, uh, technologies uh, uh, seminars you are holding. I must thank uh, Dr. Lakshmi Prasanna for giving me an opportunity, and Dr. Rajendra Kumar, uh, the first speaker who spoke upon uh, tinnitus questionnaire and other aspects of tinnitus, and Dr. Kumar from Chennai, who gave a very extensive analysis and made half my work easier. Uh, because my work is similar to that. So thank you, Kumar, da, Dr. Rajendra, and all the participants, uh, friends and participants who are participating in this lecture. Uh, you'll carry home very rich experience on these issues. Uh, basically, I am out of the town, so the control of uh, my uh, uh, therapy will be going on through one Mr. Mudassir. So he'll be presenting, and then I will be talking uh, because I'm not in the same city and the town. Okay, Mudassir, you can start uh, presentation. So for some uh, delays, you please uh, just hold on. Uh, Mother says start the PPT. Just hold on. Mudasir, are you able to hear me? Yeah. Okay.
So my talk will be having uh, uh, three portions. One will be a general PPT, and then uh, there will be a talk on tinnitus station, the measurement of tinnitus, and then there will be one talk on uh, tinnitus TO, the latest technology for rehabilitation, actually. So this will have the uh, three talks, and um, afterwards we can take up the necessary uh, questions. Mother said you can talk. Hello, Mudasir, you are able to get the screen? No, sir, screen is sir, not. You it. have to change, you have to make him a host. You should change, sir. Okay, basically, till we get the screen, I'm talking. So uh, we have done research for about eight years on this uh, topic of tinnitus and AVT. I think you must make him the host, the presenter. So we have taken eight years to uh, build up these things. And, and then uh, we have also done a lot of uh, research work on uh, different platforms, especially in the noise-induced area before we came into this uh, tinnitus field. And we are the first people to develop the tinnitus station, uh, which we will demonstrate to you, and also the mechanism of uh, treatment also. So have you made the host, Lakshmi, Dr. Lakshmi? Uh, no, sir. Actually, you are you are the host now. So you have to change as uh, Mudasir as host. Yeah, yeah. No, please change, sir. I have to change? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Uh, 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 Dr. Lakshmi, how do I change? Please, uh, sir, click on the three, uh, click on my, uh, click on the Modasir name and you will get options as make. Okay, 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 okay. Hmm. It is changed? Yes, sir, yes. yes. Okay. 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 Uh, fine, uh, we have got it now. Uh, okay, uh, so tinnitus, uh, this is my PPT by Dr. Mahabub Shanawas. Okay, uh, as uh, MSC speech and hearing. Okay, the next slide. So you have gone through these definitions by many speakers and already you know the definitions. All right, I'm not going to go into this. We go to the next slide.
वीडियो इज ओवर सर प्लीज गो अहेड ओके ओके वन मिनिट वन मिनिट हेलो हेलो तुम्हें स्टेशन बता दो शुरू कर दो प्रॉब्लम है मंजे तुम्हें स्टेशन स्टार्ट कर दो हेलो यस यस सर सर वी आर हियरिंग यू हिमाद यस सर वी आर हियरिंग यू सर कैन यू सी द स्क्रीन यस सर वी आर सीइंग वी आर सीइंग टीनेटा स्टेशन सॉफ्टवेयर सर कैन यू सी द स्क्रीन यस सर प्लीज प्ले इट सर या इट इज बीइंग प्लेड हेलो यस सर वी आर सीइंग द स्क्रीन सर बट वीडियो इज बीइंग प्लेड विदाउट अ वॉइस ऑडियो नॉट कमिंग सर ऑडियो As a audiologist, we prefer audio should be there, sir. It is much better. Sir, you can explain. Hello. Sir, my book. Sir, you have to unmute yourself, sir. Hello. as a aslp professional we were uh, told to be patient enough and also patience sometimes webinars also teaches us a lot of patience so that we will handle the disorders also in a very patient manner so yes dr imad so uh, in this between uh, i want to uh, answer the query which was raised by a 
participant in chat box saying that the a patient who has normal hearing but uh, and normal hearing normal hearing and no impedance problem and uh, tinnitus problem uh, normal in tinnitus evaluation also but they are not unable to sleep in the night uh, so this is the query uh, it was been raised see answer for this question is the first of all uh, they have disturbances in sleep because of tinnitus tinnitus actually leads uh, some so for some patients in the nights the tinnitus is perceived more and it is more bothersome comparing to daytime uh, it is so the treatment for these people hello? who have normal hello hello yes yes sir yes sir Can are you, you ready me? sir are you yes sir we are able to hear okay uh, see there there is some problem uh, okay. mudasir you keep playing the video yeah start the video rajendra kumar keep me give me a feedback whether you are able to hear or not yes sir yes sir hello mudasir start the video Yeah. We are able to see the video without any audio. So, uh, for the stage, what we do in Tinnitus Station, okay, yeah. we do the patient registration. Imad, you are able to hear me? Yes, yes, sir, yes we are here. Carry on. You are able to hear me. All right. The first step, uh, phase is we do the registration of the patient. The patient registration is very important because this is where you keep the tinnitus uh, uh, background completely intact. And also, tinnitus patients keep coming uh, regularly for tinnitus evaluation, saying that the tinnitus becomes more or tinnitus becomes less, basically. So it is necessary that you keep a track of what the whole thing. So And also for uh, future insurance, because tinnitus will be covered in insurance, it is important that uh, the results are uh, kept there. So as we finish the tinnitus registration, we come to the next phase, what is known as 2AAFC. So the 2AAFC is known as two alternate force choice in two alternate force choice what happens is we give two tones basically to the patient to understand what is he uh, hearing the sounds like so normally when you are taking the history we get to the conclusion that you have the two alternate force choice in two alternate force choice we give two two tones each time and make the patient understand which is the tone that the patient has to hear basically so in this condition, we get to the conclusion that the patient is able to respond to a particular sort of sound. So you, on the screen, you can see the two alternate force choice where we give two different tones for the individual and locate where exactly is his pitch. So once we locate where exactly is his pitch, this is known as a cursory test, basically. See, what is happening in tinnitus is you are using audiometer for doing tinnitus work, which absolutely was correct so far. But now things have changed. Basically, you cannot do in a simple clinical audiometer all these tests. I'll explain you as we go further. Amuda said, change to tinnitogram. So we come to the next aspect, what is known as tinnitogram. In tinnitogram, what we do is, this is the first audiometer in the world where we have single hertz audiometry. So single hertz audiometry was unheard of two years back. So we have designed single hertz audiometry where you can give 2000, 2001, 2002, you can keep on giving in one hertz step. On the top, you will see the frequencies. Here, instead of 2000, you can give 2001, 2002, 2003. You can keep on giving one hertz step and plot the tinnitogram. So on the left side, you can plot the tinnitogram. And then on the right side, you can plot the tinnitogram, which comes with a uh, red color uh, screen and red color identification. Here, the objective of one hertz tinnitus is a lot of musicians come out to the clinic to ask, my tinnitus is at 2550 hertz because they play musical instruments, which you cannot do in a normal audiometer at the moment, at the present. And this has been going on. You are trying to take in audiometry 2000 hertz, 3000 hertz, 4000 hertz, 6000 hertz, and which is not a very leaked amount of information because you cannot have a variation of 2000 hertz or 1000 hertz in tinnitus. Tinnitus is specific pitch. For example, you have a male mosquito, the frequency response is 2500. You have a female mosquito whose response is 2650 hertz. 
so you should be able to get that to the core what is person program or uh, is very useful in mapping the particular pitch matching so when you find out that the pitch of the tenatis is 2550 you go to 2500 and then you plot out where exactly the pitch is falling then you go 50 hertz above thereby you will able to exactly locate the pitch frequencies then once the tenatogram is done you have done most of the work then you come to the 2AFC I mean uh, to uh, octave confusion octave confusion it is very difficult once again to do by audiometry here you uh, plot the pitch it is 2050 you plot the pitch and then you go one octave above one octave below and then give the same octave in the end to find out that the patient is able to correctly tell what his octave frequency of tinnitus is falling. So this is known as a two octave confusion test. Once the two octave confusion test is passed by the patient, then you are sure that uh, you what you have done tinnitogram is correct. So once you have done this, you save this reading and then you go this, all these first three tests are done on the opposite side. For example, if the patient has a, 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 a tinnitus at 2000, uh, uh, 500 hertz on the right side, uh, you are testing the pitch matching on the left side. Remember, you are doing the pitch matching on the left side. And if the patient has bilateral, you do for the better ear the pitch matching. Once you have done the 2 AFC, you have done the tinnitogram, then you have done the also the other test, uh, what is known as the octave confusion, you move on to the minimum masking level. In the minimum masking level, you just give the masking noise. That is, see here, the masking noise is going. You give the minimum masking noise to the ear that is affected. You give to the ear that is affected and you find out what is the minimum level that the person is able to mask his tinnitus or suppress his tinnitus, if not completely, partially. So this is known as the minimum masking level. So once the minimum masking level is over, then you come to the next test that is known as the residual inhibition test. Residual inhibition test is known as a sensation level test. In residual inhibition test, you have what is known as the sensation level. You give 10 dB above, the computer automatically does the management. See, all this is a software technology and it is done on a normal PC or on a desktop. So thereby, thereby there is no error of any calibrative error or there is no error of any adjustment and frequency because all the work has already been done. So you give at 10 dB above the threshold of the patient. That is, if it is at 35 dB, it will automatically adjust to 45 dB. Then you give the noise like in tone decay test for 10 seconds to 60 seconds. So if the patient is able to suppress his tinnitus below 60 seconds, he is a very good candidate for noise therapy and he is suitable candidate for all the noise therapy measures. Suppose he is not able to suppress in 60 seconds, you repeat the test two times and when you repeat the test two times, you will get to know with the uh, 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 proper and a prior explanation whether the patient has understood the test or not. After three tests, if the patient does not suppress his tinnitus, the patient does not suppress his tinnitus within 60 seconds, then he is a neurological case or a psychiatric case and he needs a referral to the other departments. But if he is able to suppress the tinnitus with 30 seconds or 40 seconds, he is a very good candidate for tinnitus noise therapy. Here itself during the testing, you can make out whether the patient is suitable for noise therapy or he is not suitable for noise therapy at all. So this is the paradox and this is the culmination what we have done the research on algorithm artificial intelligence and got into this conclusion all is done in a systematic way using computerized audiometry basically and then later on you can present and predict a report report is very much important for uh, insurance company that is known as cpt current procedural terminology it has got a code and this code will depict how uh, what is the reference number for the insurance companies to pay the particular amount to the patient. So whatever cases you have done, it will come out on the screen. So even if the patient comes after six months or one year or two years, you can still be able to do the things and find out what was his previous report and then generate a new report for his tinnitus. Well, let's go into the reports. So you can, uh, you can predict the report. So you have got two reports here. One report is a tinnitogram report where you will have the whole uh, frequency coming out 
and the other will be a scientific report. So here, when you come to the report matching, you will get two reports. One is what all you have done, all the six test findings will be coming out and like this. So you have said the tinnitus diagnostic report, all the six tests what you have done, including the residual inhibition and the pitch matching, everything will come out with the patient name, age, time details, and the printout with the comments of the RCI certified audiologist comments will also come out there so that this becomes a valid. This can be sent to any doctor through an email or through an WhatsApp or whatever be the export mechanism that you are taking place. And for insurance purposes, you need two reports. One is a tinnitogram report like the ECG report. This has to accompany the main scientific report which you saw in the previous page. So without a tenatogram report, the insurance the company does not accept it because handwriting or something like this, we have done audiometry, this is the tinnitus, is not acceptable in the future with insurance company. Every clinic has to have a printed out tinnatogram. So this is known as tinnatogram, which is the core for tinnitus testing, basically. So once this is done, in most of the Gulf countries and United States and UK, Insurance company pays for tinnatogram, which is quite a good amount. They pay about nearly $300 to $400 for a tinnitus report. So tinnatogram and all these tests are being done basically after an ENT clearance, basically. Yeah, Mother said, go to the next one. So after a basic clearance and then after the clearance is over, you will have to uh, go in for a complete audiological evaluation, which will consist of an audiometry, tympanometry, if necessary, OAE. In cases where there is a hearing loss and other things to rule out a cerebral angle tumor, you will go also into uh, an ABR, and then you come for the tinnitus evaluation. Normally, this tinnitus evaluation will take about 45 minutes to 60 minutes for a thorough investigation to take place, and then it is timed out. Then once this is done, a clinic should also have what is known as a formative approach towards the treatment logistics. Okay, you just cannot do an audiogram and send to a hearing aid manufacturer to fit a hearing aid. Hearing aids were there. Hearing aids were there. Now it has become obsolete because the job of a hearing aid is just to help the hearing impaired person. It is not for tinnitus. If at all they have added some noise and some tones, they are not fit for a hearing aid patient. And remember that 40% of the hearing aid patients of the 40% of the, of the tinnitus patients don't have hearing loss. 35 to 40% of the tinnitus patients don't have hearing loss. So you should be careful not to give a hearing aid to a tinnitus patient because you are increasing his disappearance, cosmetic disappearance. At the same time, you're also making him uh, not getting useful information through a hearing aid. Okay. And it is only... Uh, 40 to 70 percent of the, the next 30 percent have got mild hearing loss or presbycusis basically that have tinnitus. It is the 30 percent who have got um, moderately severe and severe hearing loss who have got real tinnitus and these patients are really not benefited with any mechanism because their cochlea is totally degenerated. There's no point with a, a, a person having a severe to profound hearing loss at 90 dB. You come and fit a hearing aid. First of all, he does not hear with a hearing aid. And second things, the speech matching and sound and tones will not go into his central auditory mechanism at all because his hearing cochlea is totally degenerated. So people who are having more than 70 dB hearing loss, they are not fit or eligible for any tinnitus rehabilitation training. You can give them cognitive behavior therapy, but really they are not suitable above 75 dB hearing loss. So 35 to 40% have normal hearing. So hearing aid does not come into the picture. Hearing aids don't function. And hearing aids give masking sound only in the age, only in the frequency range of 100 hertz to 5000 hertz. If somebody has high frequency tinnitus, like 8000, 9000, 10,000 or 11,000, they will not be benefited with the hearing aid even 10 to 20 percent. So remember this concept because earlier stage hearing aids were good. They were really very good because there was no other suitable technology available at that point of time. So when you do something in the clinic, you should also give what is known as a tinnitus treatment protocol. Uh, Muda sir, come. Tinnitus trio. So uh, Tinnitus Trio is a software technology. It has got four modules. In the world, there are three companies. One is Neuromonics from Australia. 
One is London Tinnitus Clinic. He is an audiologist who started one clinic. Today, he's having a chain of about 75 clinics dealing only with tinnitus. And the third one is uh, Sound Cure from USA. So all these are priced around $3,000. So ours is the next uh, technology that has come out, what is known as Tinnitus Trio. In Trinitas Trio, what we have got is, basically, we have designed four modules. Neuromonics, which is very popular in America, has designed only one module, and they believe that it is only the frequency response uh, or the musical therapy that is important for tinnitus. So that is their way of thinking, and they have designed what is known as the uh, Neuromonics uh, technology. And then the next technology is from London Tinnitus Clinic, the London Tinnitus Clinic believes that their whole program is based upon tonal therapy. Their whole program is based upon the tonal therapy. In tonal therapy, what they do is they give multiples of tones, multiples of tones in algorithm steps. Sound Cure, he was the originator or a... Hello? Uh, start the rotinitis trio. So, in uh, 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 sound therapy, he was the originator of cochlear implants. So, he has designed soft tone therapy. So, he is uh, one of the professor of uh, California University, Zhang Gang. His name is Zhang Gang. So, he is the originator. So, we studied all these uh, proposals and then we built up our own tinnitus trio technology here. Uh, in India, basically, with a team of about psychoacoustics, uh, uh, computer engineers, and all these uh, biomedical engineers, audiologists, and all these people. So our objective is we have put all the things into a mobile phone. The reason is we bought the drivers from uh, important companies, and we did it because already uh, mobile phones are advanced technology where billions of dollars has been spent in making the mobile phone. We never wanted to go in for another uh, tool. And second thing is the cosmetic look of the mobile phone. So anybody holding a mobile phone is easy because he's taking training from the mobile phone. Nobody will raise any suspicion or objection. And a third thing is mobile phones are software driven. When they are software driven, basically what happens is you can add any sort of information. You can negotiate any sort of information that you cannot do in a hearing aid or in a device. So this was the advantage in bringing out the technology into a mobile phone. So Neuromonics is with music. London Tinnitus Clinic is with uh, basically uh, tonal. And then a soft cure is with sounds. So we brought out four technologies. So what are the four technologies? The four technologies is one is uh, musical. One is uh, environmental sound. Because every tinnitus patient comes and complains that my sound in the ear appears like a bee sound or an ocean sound or a rain sound or so many other things. So we have brought out environmental sounds, which are about 250 in the picture. And then we have brought out what is known as masking noise. So masking noise, we have started from 100 hertz to 15,000 hertz. You can't think of hearing aid manufacturer to bring 15,000 hertz masking sound into a hearing aid. Okay. And each is again in one hertz step. Suppose somebody's tinnitus is at 2,225, you can give that particular noise. In hearing it, what happens? It gives a broadband noise. If the person has got high frequency hearing loss at 6,000 and 8,000, even his other frequencies are embedded with noise. Over the passage of time, you know what happens, noise pollution will occur. So we can give specific frequencies. You can give specific frequencies into the whole episode as such. Okay, so we have got masking noise from 100 hertz to 13,500 uh, 13, is absolute and 13,500 uh, 13, to 16,000, we have got the extended. Then we have got what is known as that tonal therapy. Tonal therapy is we start with 100 hertz and we go up to 15,000 hertz with multiple octaves. We go with multiple octaves. In multiple octaves, what does it mean is you give one particular sound, like as example, 2,250, 200, you will have four octaves running around, half octaves. It will go at 1900, it will go at 2000, uh, 250, it will go at 2500, and it will go at 2750. So that person with tinnitus gets all the four towns in milliseconds. Now, what is the reason for this? The reason for this is the research says 
this gives the person the opportunity of adaptation. What is tinnitus? Tinnitus is a phantom sound. That means the hair cells are responding, but at the cortex level, that particular frequencies that are represented by the cochlea are represented in the auditory cortex in the hearing area. When that particular frequencies are disrupted for any reason, that particular area in the auditory cortex is also disrupted. So in order to make the disruption, which is asynchronous, in order to make the disruption, which is asynchronous to synchronous level, you have to give the same replication of the sound. And this you have found out by tinnitus pitch matching. That's why single heard step is very important because the brain can respond what the ear hears. The ear hears from 16 hertz to 21,000 hertz. But most prominently from 250 hertz to 15,000 hertz, the ear can hear very well in an young adult. As the age increases, of course, you know, presbycusis sets in and the higher frequencies are non-functional. So the same tonotopic representation of the cochlea is there at the brain level. So when that particular frequencies are affected, this tonal therapy will give a clear calibrated signal, will give a clear calibrated signal to the auditory cortex through the ear and that representation takes an adaptation. So when you come to the masking noise, what is the phenomenon of the masking noise? The masking noise does suppression. In the olden times, what used to happen in the uh, palaces, you might have seen big, big fountains, big, big fountains across. Those who had tinnitus used to go near the fountains and the gush of the water used to reduce the tinnitus. So here also, when you use a, a, a mobile phone or you use some musical instrument, your tinnitus subsides at that particular time. So the suppression of the tinnitus, we have made a particular frequency response so that this particular frequency responses are taken up for suppression purpose. That's why if the patient, as per your test, has got a tinnitus at 2,250, you give 500 hertz below, give the same frequency, and 500 hertz above. The advantage of the software is you can draw a curve. You can draw a bell-shaped curve, and then you can use the bell-shaped curve basically to mask his tinnitus. So we have got the second module, what is known as uh, the uh, tinnitus. Okay, suppression, that is the masking noise. So we finish environmental sounds. Environmental sounds are, we have got 250 environmental sounds. These 250 environmental sounds will resemble some of the factors of the patient who has got tinnitus. For example, he says, I hear the ocean sound. We have the ocean sound, about four or five ocean sounds. And those ocean sounds are being listed over there. And we bring those sounds basically. And then we try to make the person substitute those sounds with our sounds. Okay, this substitution mechanism takes place through our technology. Out of 250 sounds, the patient will pick up about 25 sounds and he will practice this 25 sounds till his tinnitus gets into a sort of a substitution mo module. So one is the tinnitus tonal therapy where you give the tones as per the test. Number two is the masking noise where we give the masking noise for separation purpose. Number three is a substitution mechanism where we give the environmental sounds similar to the sound what he has got as per the history of the patient so that he can match it. And the fourth one is music because music is known as relaxation. As I told you, neuromonics has the complete contract of the soldiers of Iran and Iraq numbering about 200,000. They are the responsible for supplying this uh, tinnitus uh, instruments and their theory is noise, musical noise, musical tones can suppress tinnitus and they have been quite successful with that. So this is known as not the normal music, but it is known as the filtered music. We have taken this royalty of the filtered music from clinics from the United States, from sleep disorder clinics, from sleep disorder clinics. A lot of people don't have proper sleep because of various depressive factors psychological factors and tinnitus. So they have formulated about 500 musical tones that will make these people sleep, basically. And we have taken, we have got all the 500 sounds, but we have put into our system only 250 sounds. So these 250 sounds will make all the people get into the factor of going to sleep. So here also we choose about 25 musical sounds and then we rehabilitate the patient with these 25 musical sounds and he falls asleep. 
we have seen in our experience a lot of senior citizen above 60 years without these musical instruments without our musical therapy they are not able to go to sleep and they fall asleep just in 10 minutes time after listening to music so these four modules are there musical therapy environmental sounds tonal therapy and masking therapy which you cannot get in any instrument you cannot get in any hearing aid or you cannot get in anything so let me tell you one important thing there is no cure for tinnitus there is no cure for tinnitus but there is only management for tinnitus as far as medication is concerned given by the various specialists medications are useful if at all there is secretory otitis media or eustachian tube obstruction and the person has got tinnitus or wax in the ear can also produce tinnitus if he has got any of these uh, external and middle ear pathologies medications are useful for only for the first four months but if it is a chronic uh, tinnitus giving medicines is of no use even if you give 100 tons of medicine nothing is going to happen i have seen patients 50 years back, they were having tinnitus and still they are having tinnitus. They have used all the possible medicines in the world. Nothing is going to happen. It is like myopia, wearing glasses. Okay. There is no cure for tinnitus, but there is management and the management skills lie with the audiologist in question. Remember this, the Hello. management skills Hello. lie with the, Hello. Um, Hello. The, the management skills lie with the consultant audiologist. Okay. So there is a lot and lot okay. of work in tinnitus. And this lot and lot of work in tinnitus can be happening and it can maybe be made a specialty clinic because if you are really interested, you have got hundreds and hundreds of untapped patients for tinnitus. Patients suffering with tinnitus will come back to you and patients suffering with tinnitus will definitely come back to you because there is no remedy. There are about 4 billion Google hits. I mean, uh, all over the time in the last 10 years seeking remedy for tinnitus. Seeking a remedy for tinnitus. So tinnitus is such a sort of a condition where the audiologist will come and play a very important role. Now, how long should this technology be used? Mudha sir, you can make me the host. So how long this uh, conditions can be utilized? Okay. Now, as per the report and analysis, it has been told that uh, the treatment regime by neuromonics, who have done a lot of work on the military people, have said that this tinnitus program has to be used for about 8 to 12 months on an average 2 hours a day. If you miss one or two days, there is no problem. But on an average, it has to be used for about nearly uh, 2 hours a day. So you can, uh, in our therapy regime, which we have got the four modules, you can use tinnitus uh, uh, the therapies half of an hour every day, but you can use the musical therapy even for one or two hours. How it is used, when you have to use you can use it in any part of the day. You can use it in any part of the day, either morning, afternoon, while driving a car, while uh, taking breakfast, because your earphones or headphones will be there on your head. And you can uh, use the uh, tinnitus modules so because the system is delivered. Sir, sir, Shano, sir, as there is a disturbance, I muted everyone. Please unmute your mic, sir. Sir, please unmute your mic and speak, sir. Shano, sir. Shano, sir. He's non-stop. <laughs> sir, please unmute and speak. <laughs> sir is involved very much. I think we can call it. Uh, Mahabub Shanova, sir. Now, now you can uh, unmute all and tell him the same. Uh -huh, unmute Hello. option is not there. Ah, sir, Mudasir. please unmute. Mudasir. Sir, Mudasir. Dr. Khanji, please call Mudasir. Khanji, sir. Mudasir is also Hello. not there. Hello, mm -hmm. Mahbub, sir. Hello. Sir is not uh, lifting calls also. Hello. Ah, sir, please unmute and talk, sir. Hello. Did you answer the call? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Yes.
हाँ प्लीज अनम्यूट सर हेलो सर शानवा सर या शानवा सर प्लीज अनम्यूट अनम्यूट योर माइक शानवा सर या या नाउ यू आर हियरिंग हाँ एट लास्ट फाइनली कंग्रेलेशन हेलो यस सर यस सर कैरी ऑन सर कंटिन्यू सर हेलो यस सर वी आर हियरिंग कंटिन्यू ओ कैन यू हियर मी नाउ यस सर यस सर यू आर यू आर होस्ट सर नाउ नाउ यू आर द होस्ट Hello, can you hear me, Dr. Yes, Rajendra? Sir. Can yes. you hear me? Yes, sir. We are hearing. Continue, okay. sir. So, uh, as we were talking about the regime, so it is used for about two hours in a day, basically, and uh, you can use it for half of one hour each module of hours, and for the sleep portion, you can use it for one and a half hours uh, to two hours till you fall asleep. Then, after some time, you will feel that uh, you will be able to sleep in within ten to fifteen minutes. This is what has been our observation, and regarding the results. Uh, as per neuromonics, they have done a lot of work on uh, basically uh, on uh, the armed forces uh, people, and they have said there is a response of about forty percent improvement. The improvement in tinnitus is in phase shift. What is the meaning of phase shift? Phase shift means when you are having a tinnitus at five thousand hertz, it will shift to about three thousand hertz. That is known as the phase shift, basically. So the phase shift. Uh, plays a very significant role because over the passage of time, the phase shift from 3,000 will become 2,000. Then it will become tolerable. As I told you, there is no cure for tinnitus, but there is management. So they have found that there has been a phase shift and that has been improvement. So 40% of the cases have shown very good improvement in one year time, and about 30% showed moderate improvement, and about 30% showed very mild, and about 10% did not show any uh, improvement at all. So this is how the whole system has been working. But nevertheless, these technologies were not there few years back. Now these technologies have come out, and they are all non-invasive technology, mind you. There is also transmagnetic treatment, there is electrode treatment, there is surgery, and all these things which have not been uh, ethically or scientifically proved. But this a uh, lot of uh, studies have been done on uh, uh, veteran administration by the armed forces, and they have found that uh, the, this. Uh, uh soldiers have been able to respond very well uh, because of uh, they were uh, developing the noise induced hearing loss with tinnitus another very important area where we have to look into is the oncology patient where chemotherapy is used see in chemotherapy what happens is the extensive dosage of chemotherapy and the amount of uh, cancer uh, patients coming on uh, at the moment uh, seems to indicate that they start developing tinnitus first then hearing loss and most of the tinnitus is in their Uh, frequency range of 6000 hertz and above basically so for this patient it is very important that you do a high frequency audiometry that is the high frequency is audiometry is our tinnitus station which will take from 1 hertz from 100 hertz to 15000 hertz you have to do that audiometry as a screening then prescribe this tinnitus uh, uh, trio modules for them at least on a trial basis and work upon the oncology patient same thing with uh, nephrology cases Who have got kidney problem? They are also used with a lot of drugs. So drugs-induced autotoxicity produces tinnitus, which has already been well established, basically. And the psychological tinnitus patients are also there. They get treat, uh, treated uh, very well. So all the four technologies go into a mobile phone with a very simple technology, which will be shown. So let me tell you, there are a lot of things to talk on tinnitus. As I told you, that our videos were not working properly because I was outside the city. And then uh, we'll definitely make it a point to give a video demonstration next time, or even do a hands-on training uh, in your respective uh, cities, uh, basically. And those who are interested, those clinicians who have joined now and who are interested, you can write to me, or you can write to uh, Dr. Lakshmi Prasanna, Rajendra Kumar, or to the UAC. we are very happy to start a tinnitus clinic in your setup so tinnitus clinic is the future like cochlear implants okay so you can uh, do a very good job and you will have enough enough work because not many people are working in this field and cognitive behavior therapy plays a very essential and an important role 
So when you do the tinnitus station, work up about the tinnitogram, then you give what is known as cognitive behavior therapy to the patient. Then you give what is known as tinnitus retraining therapy using our tinnitus trio. Tinnitus trio is our objective uh, tool in the mobile phone, all the software being embedded into the mobile phone for training. We give five days training for the patient in our clinics or we give it to the house to the patient so that he can use it for five days. When he feels it comfortable, when he feels it uh, responsive, then we sell the device or we put the software technology into the patient's mobile phone, thereby reducing the cost of the product, basically. If the patient does not want it to be fitted into his own mobile phone, you can give him a dedicated mo mobile phone. The best phone that works with our uh, software drivers is Samsung mobile phone at the moment, only in Android technology, not in iPhone technology. So after doing an ENT examination, an audiological examination, you come for a tinnitus assessment, then go in for cognitive behavior therapy for one session, explaining him the rules and regulations of why his tinnitus is appearing or what is the ongoing thing in his tinnitus. Then after that, you give him three sessions of tinnitus re-education therapy using the software technology uh, from the clinic's uh, mobile phone, basically, which will be a demo unit. And then if he's satisfied, then you can sell the tinnitus to your device to the patient. And then you can maintain every two months by doing the tinnitus station, uh, retest again and finding out whether there is any phase shift or not in his tinnitus, basically. So this is how the paradigm for tinnitus works. It is not just doing one test and sending somewhere. The, the other person who is selling the tinnitus device does not know what is tinnitus because they are mostly salespeople. Even if they are audiologists, they are not trained in uh, uh, tinnitus. They should be trained in audio in tinnitus, basically. And I appreciate the wholesome efforts of uh, the president, the secretary, and the office bearers basically uh, from Hyderabad, USCA, that they have taken the initiative for bringing the awareness and bringing the technology to the ASLP. This is very important. And the next step would be this group has to take up the initiative of doing hands-on training for this uh, group in Hyderabad or in Bangalore or elsewhere so that each and every audiologist in India gets trained in tinnitus because this is a big uh, venture. If we don't do it, somebody else will do it. Okay, sure, so sure, sure, sure. Does, does it, we should enter the market and we are the people who have to do it because it's a psychoacoustic measure as Mr. Kumaran has presented very well. So we should be responsible to train the tinnitus patients as well as do the tinnitus testing. And as I tell you, there is a very big infrastructure for this. Wherever there is noise, there is tinnitus. Wherever there are drugs, there is tinnitus. Wherever there is uh, musical uh, things happening, events happening, there is tinnitus. And Everybody with the age, deafness, uh, the first symptom is tinnitus, then other things. Tinnitus is more bothersome than hearing loss. Mind you, people who come to me, they say, sir, I'm not worried about my hearing loss because everybody shouts in India, so I don't need to have to uh, listen to them. I listen automatically even though I have a moderate hearing loss. This is already said uh, to me, but they say this bothersome of tinnitus, I'm not able to concentrate. I'm not able to sit. I'm not able to do anything as such. So please help me. So if you can come into this picture, learn yourself and do the things, it will be a lot of good helping the society and helping the tinnitus patient. So with this uh, uh, words, uh, and I have taken uh, correctly some time, and uh, I really thank uh, Swikar Institute, Dr. Lakshmi and uh, uh, Dr. Rajendra Kumar and all the office bearers of UAC and the participants who have sat for such a long time uh, to listen to my lecture. Uh, thank you all very much. And I'm open for any questions if there are any questions. And if you have understood very well, carry home this message that tinnitus is through you and you are the audiologist, RCI certificate. Because always uh, these two people, Imad and Nagendra, keep on putting RCI, RCI. So you should be happy that RCI audiologist is going to do this work. Thank you all very much. Thank you so much, sir. Sir, you have a few questions. Uh, one of the participants is asking, what is the cost of tinnitus trio and tinnitus station in India? Sir, have you got the question, sir? Mahabhu Shanavas, sir. Sir, Shanavas, sir. You have got two questions from the participants. Shanawa, sir. 
हेलो मुदसिर मुदसिर आर यू देर ताना सर I am not able to listen. I do not know. Uh, okay. Can you hear us? Hello. Now, can you hear, sir? Sir, there is a question from participant, sir. Can you answer it, sir? Sir, are you hearing? Are you able to hear? Hello. Yes, sir. Ah, any questions? Yes, sir. Uh, you have two queries. Uh, Madam, will ask now. Madam, yes, yeah, yeah. Madam, please. Yeah, yeah. Sir. Yeah, please tell me. Can you hear me, sir? Ah, yeah, yeah. Tell me. I'm able. Sir, Signal is low, but you can tell me. Asking, sir, one of the participants is asking. What is the cost of tinnitus trio and tinnitus station in India? Okay, for the cost of the tinnitus trio and tinnitus station, they can write to us. We'll yes. give them all the pamphlets and description and tell the cost. Okay, sir, there was a question by an a participant. Uh, the tinnitus yeah. is tinnitus is perceived in the night, whereas his no audiological reports are normal. Like yeah. uh, impedance, PTA, and even the tinnitus questionnaire that shows a normal report. So yeah, yeah. Uh, they have uh, difficulty in sleeping because of tinnitus. What treatment yes. is recommended? Yeah, tinnitus musical therapy is a uh, treatment of choice because the patient is exposed to the environmental sound during the daytime, so his tinnitus is subsided. So when it is quiet, the tinnitus is enhanced. For them, musical therapy is the best choice, which is their internet yes. history. Yes, sir. Nice, sir. Thank you. Sir, is it currently available in any academic uh, institutions? Hello? 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 Yes. Sir, is that uh, tinnitus station is available in any academic institution? No, uh, so far we have not supplied except we are working in the defense of India. Now we mm -hmm. are going to slowly enter into the retail market. And if you are interested, you can write to us and then uh, we will uh, definitely assist you in having the tinnitus station. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. And one more uh, final yeah. question. Uh, I mean, one more question. That uh, any changes in tinnitus with lifestyle, lifestyle changes, and following yoga and meditation in early stages of tinnitus? Yeah, yeah. Everything like uh, any relaxation done, uh, any procedure done, any exercises done, which can relax the mind and body, will definitely help in uh, tinnitus regulation, basically. And uh, definitely, uh, you know, all this uh, low salt intake and uh, diabetic control. All these things are metabolic conditions which can increase tinnitus. So these are all aspects that have to be followed into the lifestyle uh, to reduce the tinnitus in the early stages, definitely. Sir, one more question, sir. If tinnitus caused by a sinus, sinusitis, will it be cured after sinusitis surgery? Yeah, yeah. if it is uh, something related to a medical condition, it will be treated and the tinnitus will disappear. Okay, basically, this can happen in eustachian tube obstruction, sinusitis, uh, okay, uh, all this, uh, uh, even a uh, uh, lot of middle ear condition like glue in the ear. So, all these things, that's why the time given is four months framework. Within four months, medications and uh, minor surgeries can definitely help to overcome the tinnitus. If the tinnitus persists after six months, then it is known as chronic tinnitus, where medications don't help. Yes, sir. sir Any more uh, questions? Sir, uh, regarding this, uh, to write to you, please uh, post your uh, email ID or phone number or address so that the people will contact you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mother, sir, just send the uh, email ID. 
chat box you can write type up. yeah chat box uh, write the email id and the phone number okay Other, otherwise if... they can write to tasalpa we will route it to yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sir uh, always we, we have also. contact number otherwise uh, yeah, he will try to put up in case any problem in the signal is there then sure. uh, we can do it okay sure sure sir very so nice in to put up yeah do, do we have any more questions Participants, please feel free to ask any question related to tinnitus evaluation and uh, treatment because Sar has extensively done uh, research on it and uh, he has self-developed uh, his own tool uh, and instruments which really helps uh, to reduce tinnitus. So in future, as Sir said, we have to concentrate uh, not only a regular hearing problem patients, also those who undergo chemotherapy, cancer treatment, and uh, they have side effects like tinnitus. Tinnitus is a perceived uh, uh, very very prone disease uh, causative factor. So uh, it may manifest from any disease. So in this regard, to treat tinnitus, as sir said, it is a benign tinnitus or chronic tinnitus, acute tinnitus or chronic tinnitus. Based on that, we can do uh, various assessments even at a frequency specific one and we can uh, really match the masking tone and uh, uh, not only masking tone, the relaxation tones, musical tones. These all options are uh, there and developed by uh, Sir and his team from uh, many years. So we have, as an audiologist, we have to be aware of this and we have to look forward to the patients who are suffering uh, with tinnitus with no hearing loss or uh, no hearing complication. Sir, uh, you can add up, sir, if any, and uh, we can hand over to Ota of Thanks. Yeah, uh, nothing. So, uh, as I told you, as Dr. Rajendra Kumar also says, try to develop tinnitus clinics. In London, the friend of mine who's running the tinnitus uh, clinic, basically, he started with one clinic and today he has got 48 clinics, basically, all over UK. And his work is only in tinnitus. So, there is enough work and enough logistical work and enough scientific work is there. So tinnitus is a big field. Uh, try to take it and try to establish and our address will be given and uh, any sort of support you need, we are there to ready to help and uh, uh, appreciate these things. And you are always you are welcome to Bangalore. We have a very good uh, clinic in the defense of India, both in Bangalore and Delhi. Uh, we can take you there, we can train you and we also have our own clinics now and we are going to start an academy for tinnitus, a national academy for tinnitus exclusively, mm -hmm. of course, with the help of uh, many organizations. You can join that and we can have a three-day workshop, hands-on training, either in Hyderabad or in Bangalore. And so we can work out. If you work out, things will also work out. And uh, as I told you, this is the first step. Uh, we'll look into that. If, uh, if the uh, things are chat box, uh, Mudasir can go on the chat box and uh, give the address. Uh, if it is not possible, I will send it to yes, UCLA got, and Tesalpa. They will distribute to you. For the kind information. We got it. A literature yeah. to UCLA secretary. He will distribute to all the participants. Yes, sir. Yes. Sure. Thank you. That's all from me. My book, sir, sir, ID has been given uh, in the chat box. Anybody who is having any concerns about tinnitus and management, they can look for it. Yeah. it was very wonderful webinar and i think all the queries were uh, cleared from clear and first of all first of all my heartfelt thanks to dr Mahindra, sir, founder of Sweetar academic rehabilitation sciences for allowing us to conduct this fascinating webinar on tinnitus on the account of tinnitus awareness week. Secondly, I I thank our partners, Dr. Magendra, President of Tasalpa and Yuka, and Dr. Imad Khan, General Secretary of Tasalpa and Yuka. And uh, obviously, I would like to thank all my speakers, Dr. Rajendra Kumar, for delivering his knowledge towards tinnitus and valuable information towards subject to assessment. And 
Psychoacoustic measurements of tinnitus, and I extend my thanks to experience towards the technology in tinnitus, such developing such wonderful software, and um, it is very wonderful to know and to get effective uh, reports, case reports, and all. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you all the speakers, and uh, finally, I would like all I would like to thank all the participants for your wonderful patience and uh, for making this program very successful. Thank you so much. Now I so much. request uh, Dr. Nagender to please uh, address the gathering and conclude. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much everyone for uh, joining this webinar and uh, make it grand success. Today, I can say the three, are, three, three speakers are the gems like uh, Trimurthulu, Brahma, Vishnu, and Maheshwara of Tinnitus. Dr. Mahabhu Shanavasar is having vast international knowledge, more than 45 years plus, and Professor Dr. R. K. P. Sir is also having a 15 years plus experience, and also he completed his PhD from uh, SRM Institute under uh, uh, the great legendary uh, Professor Dr. Balakrishna Sir in Tinnitus topic only. And uh, Kumaran Sir is also, though it is the first time we are meeting you, sir, your uh, presentation is excellent. We go again so much of knowledge as our Dr. Secretary, our Dr. Honorable Secretary, Dr. Imad Khan, woman said, uh, from your slides, we could take that tinnitus, tinnitus is not a disease, it's a symptom. Wonderful, sir. From now onwards, we will counsel our patients like this so that it will gain so much of uh, psychological confidence to them. There are a lot of patients who are suffering with tinnitus nowadays. It's been increasing. Uh, even in the youngsters also we are seeing because of a lot of uh, uh, excessive use of earphones and headphones, it's been uh, increasing. We all, As an audiologist, we all should uh, create public awareness uh, on this uh, burning topic. And recently we have conducted a, a tinnitus awareness program as a, in a Hyderabad in a park. T for tinnitus program, our Honorable Treasurer Dr. Arif Shekhji uh, initiated that program. We all have joined and uh, made it very successful. I congratulate all our EC members. I could see Dr. Gangaraju is here and also our uh, other uh, EC members also there. And my special thanks to Dr. Lakshmi Prasanna, Madam, for uh, coming forward and helping, uh, uh, providing all the support from Svika Rehabilitation Institute. Thank you so much, Madam. We will do more webinars and uh, uh, presentations and uh, conference CRE programs with you, Madam, in future. Thank you so much, one and all. A nice topic and nice presentation. Bye, Bhushan. Thank you so much, sir, for the uh, exclusive you. and uh, very detailed explanation about the tinnitus and your experience uh, throughout the uh, international in the international level, sir. Thank you so much. On this okay. uh, good occasion, I would extend uh, my thanks to Mahbub Sanawas, sir, for accepting immediately, just one day before we have uh, requested him, he has accepted. That's a great uh, thing, sir. We really uh, congratulate and we are really thankful to you. And uh, very soon, uh, we would see a good clinic in Hyderabad, as you have directed and suggested as properly. So uh, I would uh, extend my work in uh, an exclusive clinic of tinnitus in near future under your guidance. And, wow. Uh, sure. Thank you so much. Excellent. Thank Excellent. you very much. Sure, from speaker, also we'll approach you, sir. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Yes, madam. So immediately, I would like, first of all, I should thank our Dr. Nagender and Dr. Imad and our team who immediately responded mm -hmm. and uh, without any um, hindrance or any this one, they have immediately uh, suggested that, that they will come forward and they will uh, provide the web platform and also all the infrastructure required for this uh, timely. And yesterday also, they have uh, called in the night to have the program in a proper process. So this is the interest the our Tassel and Yuka are uh, having with the good team. So I request everyone to please uh, also do proper awareness about the tinnitus and speech and hearing related diseases and the important uh, days so that we will uh, bring awareness. Now in Hyderabad, we can see there is a lot of change in terms of awareness. It is not there even in other big metropolitan cities comparing to Hyderabad. This is because 
i i think that is because of our mother field tasalpa and uh, all the institutions have uh, brought the good awareness in hyderabad so the audiologists over here sir are very much in demand both in speech therapy and audiology so congratulations to once again to our tasalpa uh, for all good initiations and uh, all the experts and thank you, uh, thank you. minute i just want to add one thing uh, we also have a software technology for cochlear rehabilitator the first in the world and also for okay. speech voice and language uh, probably tesalpa is both for audiology and speech therapy tesalpa will uh, i hope uh, in the near future will conduct a congress on uh, uh, cochlear rehabilitator because that is also a growing field uh, in our uh, specialty cochlear many I... people have to take up this responsibility also yes sir i uh, request uh, our uh, swikar uh, institute madam lakshmi prasanna madam and uh, other institutional heads to have the offline program along with you for one two days on both on three days actually i thought of proposing this on three days uh, where i think uh, that would help uh, really how to uh, know about the technology how to assess in terms of voice in terms of tinnitus in terms of uh, cochlear rehabilitator as you yes. have said so yes. three days three things need to be taken or in one or two days we can complete that offline program will be really helpful sir i request yes. lakshmi prasanna madam to uh, procedurally follow the thing and do sir we have to work on offline uh, three day workshop very soon sir yeah yeah i uh, request uh, on this platform to mahabu shanawa sir to please accept yes. and uh, extend your uh, support to us yes 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 dr rajendra kumar yes thank you sir thank you thank you all participants thank you uh, all thank you very much guru bhyo namaha thank you ah, dr rajinder yeah uh, kumaran dr kumaran you can uh, add something because i lost your uh, screenshot <laughs> i want to have a screenshot with you because uh, you have given a good insight as a young uh, audiologist from uh, srm associate professor please uh, Sorry, please come on screen and uh, we will take a photo of you yes sir yes <laughs> sir mahbub sir please bring your uh, mobile phone little down so full face will appear yeah wow. now it is very cute like our doctor uh, imad khan <laughs> <laughs> they resemble very much each other yeah <laughs> thank you sir taking photo yes yeah. yes please I'm, doctor sir, here our friend is there doctor sachin from nashik <laughs> oh very good Yes. In spite uh, tinnitus, in spite tinnitus is very problematic. But uh, as the audiologist, we should always smile and also give a good treatment. To... <laughs> If you have tinnitus, you should keep smiling. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Positiveness. Positiveness. Throw out the, the interest of tinnitus. Interest of tinnitus is shown here, okay. sir. Actually, the meeting is over already ten minutes back, but still people yeah. are not leaving the conversation. 45 participants are still available to hear us sir yeah, that yeah, is yeah. the greatness of the our our uh, great speakers who have given us lot of knowledge they don't want to miss any point during the last minute conversation also yeah yeah, yeah. meeting, very meeting timing is over yes sir yeah yeah one is the speakers one is the organizers so thank you sir this would have not happened so <laughs> you are also like 50% 50% here yes thank, thank you sir Sanjay, please put forward few comments from your side Our easy member have to make uh, everybody. Oh yes, 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 yes. No, we will have a grand, uh, grand finale either in Hyderabad or in Bangalore very shortly. Okay. Uh, sir, thank to our nice sir, sir. Sir, manchi program or kati conduct just sir. Sir, in this one, I am participant. Sir, I am very happy. I am 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 happy. రావాలని చెప్పేసి ఇంకా మనస్ఫూర్తిగా కోరుకుంటున్నాను సార్ అండ్ ది ద విజనరీ లీడర్ డాక్టర్ నాయేంద్ర సార్ అండ్ హిమాజ్ సార్ అండ్ ఆర్కేపీ సార్ అండ్ శాన్వాల్ సార్ అండ్ లక్ష్మి మేడం గారు ఆల్సో ఇలాంటి ప్రోగ్రామ్స్ అన్ని చాలా కండక్ట్ చేయాలని కోరుకుంటా ఉన్నాను సార్ వెరీ గుడ్ వెరీ గుడ్ విల్ షూర్లీ అవర్ టీమ్ విల్ ఆల్వేస్ సపోర్ట్ ఎస్ సార్ డాక్టర్ నాగేశ్ సార్ దిస్ ఇస్ టు one minute one minute dr gangraju is a specialized in uh, deglutology that is swallowing yes. therapy 
yeah yeah so yeah, you yeah. can take help of him our uh, team uh, has his contact number yes yes uh, you yes. can please take help of him any pals uh, following this difficulty dysphagia or neurological cases yes, yes. Uh, we can really take out uh, yes, help he is very active i have seen him sometimes on the facebook and yes, sir, yes sir. and also your sites yes yes very mm-hmm. good very good uh, very good ganga raju uh, yes, excellent sir. work you are doing thank you, sir. Thank, you sir. thank you so much yeah from this platform sir everyone should get specialized in one or other area of audiology yes. and speech language pathology and communication yeah so yeah. i request every young audiologist and speech language pathologist from tasalpa and from uka and our all institutions please spe- develop your skill in one of the area yes. so that yeah, you will yeah. cover that patients very well you will provide good service as well as yeah. you will get benefit develop your clinic and uh, it will rise uh, uh, run nicely yeah, so please london, develop that in london yes. that uh, person he is an audiologist 15 years uh, back he started one clinic today he has got 50 clinics only for tinnitus he doesn't see any other patient and they wow. all are running very well because there are so many patients it is like dm and mch you know you specialize go into specialty sir, sir. yes sir so uh, by this uh, platform once again our tasalpa as every time we highlight the specialty it can be like aphasia it can be like voice it can be like swallowing disorders or uh, tinnitus or fluency anything stuttering weak everything we are uh, highlighting because hearing loss also and world uh, hearing day everything because audiologist day also even because we are uh, we want to uh, have the professionals who can really address a particular uh, area properly pro- particular disorder also so please come up with your skills develop your skills with in terms of updating your knowledge through research and research articles read those and come up so that you will be the next speaker we want to see you as the next yes. speaker Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is our idea. I, I see again. I want to see again our Kumaran and uh, Gangaraju and uh, all others uh, experts to please come up with your uh, topics. We, we are. You are always welcome because you are young and energetic. Where you can uh, provide good uh, insights to the uh, B.Sc. and M.Sc. students and as well as who are budding audiologists who are just stepping yes, to the yes, clinical program. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you very much, <laughs> Om Jai Ganapati. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, sir. I am ending the meeting. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Nagendra. Excellent. Bye, sir. Thank you. Thank Bye. you for tuning us. Bye. Have a great day. Bye for.